A minor. C. D. So, is there a way that you can see music and see it kind of like you see a photograph? And is there a relationship between music and photography? There is. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Check this out. So let me do the same thing I just did again. A minor. C. D. So you are looking at essentially a waveform or an equalizer. And over on the left side of the equalizer graph, that represents the low notes, the bass. And over on the right side, it represents the high notes. Now let's take a look at how this applies to an actual song. So see how when the note is high, it's bumping up over on the right hand side. Now we're at the mid tones and now we're getting into the lower tones. So it's over on the left. So just watch this one more time. High notes on the right, mid notes and bass tones over on the left. Now let's go to just a high pitch and see how on this equalizer graph, it's more affecting the right hand side of the graph. And now let's go to just a medium tone. So the medium tone is only hitting the center of the graph. And now let's hit a bass tone, the, the low notes. So here's the thing. When you were listening to those bass notes, they, they kind of sound good, but you can't really listen to it for all that long. You're not really going to enjoy it for very long. So likewise, when you were listening to the high notes, you're not going to enjoy that for very long on its own either because something is missing. There isn't a full dynamic range of sound there. You don't have the low notes and the high notes and the mid tones going at the same time. So it doesn't sound all that good. There's something missing. So let's listen to what it sounds like when everything is all together. So now our high notes start. And wait for the bass, wait for it. Boom. And now we have a full dynamic range piece of music. And it sounds so much better because we have that full dynamic range. We've got the bass, we've got the mid tones, we've got the high notes. So here's the question. How does this relate to photography? Because it does in a big way. What it relates to is the histogram on the back of your camera. So on the back of every cam camera, except for this one, because it's an old school film camera, there is going to be a screen here and you have the option of showing the histogram on the back of your camera. Now, I'll never forget the first time a friend showed me how to use the histogram and it was like 17 18 years ago and he said oh over on the right hand side there's the bright tones and on the left side it's the dark tones my eyes rolled into the back of my head and i didn't even want to try and understand it but when you think of it in relation to music it makes so much sense that the bright tones on the histogram are going to be on the right hand side and the dark tones on the histogram will be on the left hand side, exactly the same as the music that I just showed you. So let's look at how this relates to an actual photo. Here's a picture in Lightroom of one of my favorite places is Death Valley National Park in California. And these are the sand dunes. Now look at the histogram up here in the top right. The histogram only has the mid tones where we are missing the the dark tones and we're missing really bright tones so how do we expand this histogram so that we're going to have an image that has that full dynamic range of light in the image here's how we do it drop down the highlights open up the shadows now we just have two more things to do and and we're pretty well done with expanding the dynamic range we set the white point so I'm sliding, look at that, look at the histogram at the top. As I move it to the right, 
I want the histogram just to kind of bump up against the right hand side. And now with the black slider, I want to increase or sorry, drop down the blacks so that I've got some good contrast there. And now look, everything just changed in that photo. And, and that took me seconds to do. Now look at the histogram and we have that more of a full dynamic range of light and the photo looks so much better. Let's look at the before. And the before, it's just flat, it's boring, there's no contrast, there's no real brights, there's no real darks, it's just blah, mid-tones, yuck. And now we've increased that full dynamic range of light. Let's look at another example from Cannon Beach, Oregon. Can and by the way, I love Oregon. Oregon is such an amazing state for photography. Drop down the highlights. Oh, I didn't look at uh, the histogram first. Notice the histogram is bunched up on the left-hand side. It has so much uh, dark tones in the photo. So drop down the highlights, open up the shadows. Actually, I'm, I'm not going to completely drop down these highlights. There's no need to. I'll keep it about here. Now let's set the white point. Start sliding to the right. I'll have a little bit of blown out highlights where the sun is, but that's okay because it's the sun and the sun blows out the highlights. And now set the black point so that we have an appropriate amount of contrast in the photo. And I think for this one, because it is quite a dark photo, I just want to brighten the whole shebang, just brighten the whole thing using the exposure slider and now set the black point. And in seconds, we have a completely transformed photo. There are obviously way more adjustments that I would want to make to this photo and I, I can't help myself. I have to brighten up this guy because it's just overdone. And I just use the brush tool. One of it, the brush tool is by far my favorite tool. So let's brighten that sky and use a new brush tool again. And let's say we want to kind of darken that, that sand just a touch and let's increase the temperature on it and just give it a little more color. Just warm that up. And there we have it. Let's look at the before. There's the before and it's just so much in the dark tones and the after, before and after. So look at the histogram now. The histogram has that full dynamic range of light and it's just like the music analogy as well. So if you want to know more about the histogram, check out my book here. It's called The Photo Cookbook. Now inside The Photo Cookbook, I am using the analogy of recipes. There are 30 different recipes. If you want to take a photo of a sunset, there's a recipe for that. A photo of a person, there's a recipe for that. How to find leading lines, how to use framing, uh, how to take an HDR photo. There are 30 different recipes. Now, as you look inside here, you can see this is the recipe for how to use the histogram. And at the bottom of every page, there's this thing here. It's called a QR code. And this QR code will launch a video on your phone. All you have to do is open up the regular camera app on your phone and scan this QR code and it launches a video and there are 30 different videos that come with the book. So if you're interested in getting this book, I've got rave reviews on it so far. People who have it are really, really liking it and finding excellent value from it. You can go to photographyacademy.com and there's a link on the home page there or somewhere in the description, I'll put a link to the book. So the histogram in summary, use the histogram. It is the best friend of a photographer because it's going to show you in a graphical way whether or not you have washed out highlights or blown out highlights in the bright areas of the photo, which is usually the sky, or whether the darks are too dark. And the histogram will save your photo. Uh, I, I firmly believe that the histogram is a photographer's best friend. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me the favor of subscribing to this channel and leaving a comment because that is the metric that YouTube uses to determine whether or not this was a good video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.